since almost a year and a half after its initial release, and no time to die is here. Oh, Danny boy, you've proven to remain my favorite, and I sure am gonna miss you. Yeah, I did it! Bobo here with Brass Real Brothers. Thanks for coming back for some more popcorns. I'm running a little behind on my Halloween videos. I had some tech issues and some power outages and all kinds of shit like that. And I had to make some time to go see No Time to Die, Daniel Craig's final film. It was a big deal a few years ago back when they were calling this film Bond number 25 and Daniel Craig hadn't fully signed on yet. But I'm convinced after seeing this film, the events that occur in this film is what made him sign on. Now look, it's gonna be hard for me to talk about this film and what I liked about it without talking about some spoilers. So at the very end, I'm gonna give you a warning again that I'm gonna talk about some spoilers, but it'll be at the very end and I'll give you a warning. I swear it! Burn of me! So for those of you out there that aren't familiar with the Daniel Craig Bond films, Previously to Daniel Craig's installments, they had all been episodic pretty much. They had all just kind of been their own stories here and there. Sometimes they would reference previous films, but for the most part, they were their own individual movies. But when Daniel Craig came in, after the success of Casino Royale, they decided to create this overarching story narrative to where the films actually connect to each other. I personally really liked that. A lot of people didn't like it because they like, hey, let's just do the episodic thing. That's great. You can always go back and do that and make a single film. I, however, respect the risk that they took doing this by combining five films like this into one story. In my personal opinion, they pulled it off. I think everybody agrees that Casino Royale is their favorite Daniel Craig film. Skyfall pretty close after that one. I agree with that. Casino Royale is the best, Skyfall being a close second. This one and Spectre are pretty much equal, Quantum of Solace being the worst. I still love it. It's a Bond film, it's just Daniel Craig's worst installment. But with this movie being Daniel Craig's last one, you can tell that they were trying to do all these things that are sort of homages to the old films. The opening film is classic with Bond walking by, the circles going by, and he just it continues on with the Madeline Swan storyline. In fact, it opens up with them being together, along with a little prequel backstory we get of Madeline Swan as a child. But right away, when we see them together, they're driving around, and he says to her, we've got all the time in the world. I start hearing the song playing. Any Bond geeks out there, you know that that's from Her Majesty's Secret Service, where Bond's one and only wife gets killed. Don't worry, that's not the spoiler. But they are alluding to that, making you think that something terrible is gonna happen to this girl already, right at the beginning. And come on, if you're seeing these Bond movies, chances are you've seen all the other ones and you know all this stuff that they're throwing at you. Just like they started doing with the storytelling in Quantum of Solace going forward, they're trying to connect all these things and show you something that you didn't know that was there from the beginning. We do get that opening song where the credits roll and they throw all this imagery at you that's connected to the film, but you're not sure how yet. The song's done by Billie Eilish, which I'm all right on, it was just okay. It wasn't bad, it sounded fine, but it didn't stand out like Adele's did with Skyfall. Or oh, in my opinion, Sam Smith's for Spectre. Yeah, I liked it. Oh, also, the music's done by Hans Zimmer this time around. Man, Hans has dipped his toe into everything. Anyways, I think it's awesome that Hans got to scratch a Bond film off his list. And the villain in this is played by Rami Malek, who is fantastic. In one of my previous reviews a while back, The Little Things, that had Denzel Washington and Rami Malek in it, I said that Rami Malek was too exotic and unique looking to play such a normal detective character. He needs to be playing stuff like Freddie Mercury or a villain in a Bond film, and he worked perfectly. I was slightly worried about him overdoing it when I saw that he was going to be the villain, but he doesn't. He does a really good job, and he's creepy. But they show you Blofeld's back in this one and all that stuff. There's a female 007, but they show you all that stuff in the trailer. They do some cool things with Spectre again in this one and with Christopher Waltz's character, but remember, Rami Malek's the villain in this, even though Christopher Waltz is in it. And they take some surprises with the plot line that I gotta say, I didn't see coming that I thought were pretty cool. Now, Leah Sado plays Madeline Swan again, and she's beautiful and she's great in the film, but we've seen her before. Same with Ray Fiennes as M and Naomi Harris as Moneypenny. Again, they're both great in the movie, but we've seen them before. Who really stood out in this movie to me that I loved and I really wish she would have been in it way more is Ana de Armas. She played a sidekick character named Paloma that helps Bond out with this mission at one point in the film, who's a friend of Felix's. Oh, yeah. Jeffrey Wright's in this movie again too. But man, she was 
awesome. She stole the show. I could have watched the whole movie with her and Bond. I really hope they use her again somehow going forward. And I'm also excited to see what she's going to do in other movies because I just really thought that she was great on screen. And her character was awesome. Lashana Lynch does a good job too as the other 007 in this movie. And that's kind of a fun little side plot line that's just going back and forth is them arguing over who's going to be the new 007. Because remember, Bond's character has pretty much gone AWOL from the Secret Service at this point. Ben Winshaw is Q's in this again. He's got a good role in it. And remember when I was saying that they try to like scratch all these homages off from other Bond films because it was like Daniel Craig's last one? There's sort of a Jaws character in this movie, but instead of like big dude with teeth, he's this badass Russian dude with one eye. And he's got another eye, but it's like this robotic eye. You just have to see the film and what the plot's based on to understand that. But it's pretty cool. I gotta say, I like the guy. It worked. Oh yeah, why is Lashana Lynch wearing Roger Moore's suit? <laughs> the movie doesn't take long to pick up with the action. It starts pretty much right off and remains throughout the film. But not in a way to where it's just action. That was the problem with Quantum of Solace. It was just too much action. Not enough plot. Whereas this one, the plot is still really good and it's there. The same way they brought Blofeld in this one, an uh, old school Bond villain, into the newer franchise, they do the same thing kind of with the Dr. No villain. You'll just have to watch the movie. I'm not saying they're the same. It's just based on that. Just like any other Bond movie though, especially the Craig ones, he's badass in it. He really pulls it off. And just when you thought he might be getting a little too old to play Bond, you quickly change your mind after watching this movie. Just wait till he takes his shirt off. Yeah, I said it. But it's big. It's grand. It takes place all over the world. There's all kinds of double crossing. There's beautiful women in it. There's tons of tech gadgets in it. And it knows that it's wrapping up this storyline that's lasted for five films. In fact, it gets quite emotional at one point. So that's where I'm going to get to the spoilers. I'm going to give you just a few seconds to get situated if you want to turn this video off, if you don't want to hear these spoilers. But I got to talk about these so I can tell you what I really loved about the film. Spoiler alert! They took some risk in this film, and I was glad that they did. Not only did they make Bond more human, make you sad with him more, make you believe him more. They gave him a true reason to fight for something more than the government in this. He's not just fighting for Madeline Swan, but he's fighting for her little girl who has blue eyes, just like Daniel Craig. That's right, he's got a daughter in this and he doesn't know that she's existed for the last couple years. The way Daniel Craig's character switches from one Bond you've known this whole franchise into a different Bond, I thought was genius and I felt it. It was really emotional. And then on top of that, all this shit goes down with the plot where they finally had the balls to do it. They kill off Bond in this movie. And I don't mean like a fake thing to where he could return. No, it's a magnificent death where he sacrifices himself, not only for the betterment of the world, but for the betterment of the people that he cares about and loves. And that's what I was talking about, the reason that Daniel Craig came back for this movie. I think in his head, he was like, you know what? I think it would be cool to be the only Bond that ever dies on screen, at least to this point. And they could do it this way because it was all wrapped up and intertwined into this storyline of the Daniel Craig film. It's not just some cheesy thing that's like, oh, he couldn't make it out and he just decided to save himself. No, there's all these other layers to the plot and everything why it just fully makes sense. He has to die. Between that and the daughter thing, I thought it was awesome and it added all kinds of gravity to the film by the time that happened. Prior to those moments, it was still a great Bond film and it was another addition, but these moments are what make the movie stand out. And then they start playing the Louis Armstrong song, We Got All the Time in the World. Oh man, what a tearjerker. These moments where Bond is talking to Madeline and they both know that it's inevitable and the conversation between them two is just so sweet and emotional and it's just, it's just badass. Overall guys, I was very happy with the way they did this film and they wrapped up Daniel Craig's run. I love the heart and soul that they put into it and you can tell that they really cared about it. I give No Time to Die an A-. minus. The only reason it's not an A or an A plus is because there's two other Daniel Craig films that I like better. That's the only reason. Well, that'll do it for this review, guys. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Also, look for my Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers video coming out today or tomorrow. Look for Brassford Brothers on Facebook. Look for Bobby Williams on Facebook. And look for Brassford Brothers on Twitter. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so you can help us make it to the top. And as always, if life gives you lemons, make some hot, fresh,